and welcome to this. Hello and welcome to this last in um, a series of transmissions between worlds and it feels significant to me. It feels like the end of a, of a chapter and, and that chapter has been really going for a couple of decades of trying to bridge worlds, the world that is to come and the world that we're in and standing with a feet and a foot in either world and and seeking to support the awakening of people's souls so that the world that's to come is can come faster and i feel like it's time now to complete that journey and to actually shift both my feet into the world that's coming or really the eternal world that's underneath everything all of the time but to actually give up the the journey of being a bridge now and just live that world so it's fitting that that i'm here um on my island home where i first came when i was 16 and and buried a crystal under a rock and said this is my seat this is the place where and the Maori call it the Turanga Wai Wai, a place where the soul can breathe, a place on the earth where your heart opens and you know who you are and you feel what you've come to be. And, and that sacred relationship with the planet is, is uh, being dear to me my entire life. So to come back here and to come back after a journey of 200 miles up the coast on a on a boat with the, the whales and the dolphins that have always been my, my totems um, and to come back and to have a chance to speak to you now feels um, like at the completion of a journey. And I know when I first came back to live in this place where it's unmistakable the beauty of the natural world, um, maybe I'll try and show you a little later, but to be able to be here and to experience the, for the first time that it was okay to be a live human being who didn't have to do anything, who didn't have to prove anything that could just live and find out who I was at my deep core, to be able to be here and have that experience and then, and then spend a decade traveling out into the world, trying to help other people have that experience. So meeting thousands of people running hundreds of workshops teaching all over the world and and finding that beauty in meeting and meeting some of you and in many others you know where it's not just a meeting of individuals it's a meeting of souls there's a remembering a reunion in the meeting a coming together um, for something that is is ridden with mystery that's that's vibrating with them with with the unknown but with potential and the synergy of coming together and remembering and drawing from each other and drawing strength from each other and courage and awakening together so it feels like i've had a long period of time and the opportunity and the privilege to go and have respect again for what it is to be humans to go meet the humans on this planet who are being true to what it is to be human to expressing their core of their being and to find each other and then you know the the next journey was okay now it's time to land the temples come back to Aotearoa and and land again the um the temple at Haydn which has really been the last four or five years and that's been through a whole cycle of seven trainings to land and now when I feel deeply into my spirit it's like okay it's now it's time to live the live the culture that's coming and uh so so yeah, this opportunity to, to complete the series of transmissions that started with, with love in the time of COVID. In other words, you know, the essence of that transmission was we're in a planetary initiation. It started in 2020. It's going to go on for a decade. The high point is 2025. We're in this journey. And an initiation is a time of testing. Humanity has been tested to, to, to basically answer the question, what have you learned about love? and then prove it 
So anyone who's deeply in touch with the soul knows that this whole earth school experience, this whole experience of being alive in earth is not about survival. It's actually a school of love. It's a school <clears throat> that we're all enrolled in, whether we remember it or not, to, to learn to express the love that we are in spite of whatever circumstances around us. So this, this initiation is an initiation of love and it's a, it's a time where, where, where we start to live with our consequences of our choices. And so initiations are not really times to, to learn, they're times to express what we have already learned, they're times to choose. And in those choosing and the using your free will and making a choice for how you want to live, you then generate the, the consequences of that choice in the future. And so the world, is, the world is going through now its process and the time of getting ready for that and preparing for this time that many of us are in incarnation for is over and the time for living it um, is here. So then the next transmission was about sex and gender getting past duality of being male or female, being left or right, being spirit, you know, having a material experience or matter having a spiritual experience that the soul is beyond duality. And so being able to anchor our identities in that which is beyond duality and to be that love that we are. And then, and then humans and cosmos, like, what's our story? Where do we come from? Why are we here? Like, what's, what's the origin story, the creation story that gives meaning in our lives and how do humans fit into this much vaster experience of earth and cosmos? And then the story of money and economics as the world goes through its story around money you know what is it that we value what has meaning for us what what um is our flow of our creativity as it moves into the world and connects with others like what actually is economics and money what is value what is appreciation what is interest what is all of the terms of the soul that have been so materialized and then last time it was freedom and politics what is it to be free? What is this tremendous gift at the core of the human soul of freedom? And how do we use that freedom? How do we, how do we stand for what it is that matters at the core of our beings? What's the relationship between freedom and life? What is the consequences of choosing to live your life uncompromisingly? And how does that freedom express itself in times of crisis like we have on the planet at the moment? So these have been the journeys of um, what it is to contact what lives at the core of every human being and connects us to each other and also to the world around us. And so it feels like this final transmission is about the soul of the world. In other words, the place that unites humans with this vaster journey that surround us with the planet and where to go for help. I know in my life, um, I've had such deep sources of support and help. My allies have come at times of deep crisis. I am who I am partly because in moments where everything has been lost and I haven't known the next step, I haven't known how to take the next step, then support has come. It's come from amazing places in my life. And only those who, who risk, who are willing to risk their lives and, and to risk that such things as love and beauty and honor and integrity are, are real. And that, that when you live those things, then the universe moves to support you in, in ways that you could not even dream of. If, you, if you've lived that kind of adventure, then you know you know that you can't rely on, on yourself at times. Times you must be supported and lifted by, by the soul as it comes through others or as it comes through those, those two major ways that we relate to the soul of the world. One is transcendent. In other words, that is beyond the human story of mind and emotions and body, the story of the transcendent soul, you might say, the, the bodhisattvas and the ascended masters and the, the aliens and, and anyone who lives in those subtle worlds beyond the, the realm of the human mind where understanding ceases and pure gnosis begins between 
between when you can look after yourself and when you need to be supported. And in my life, the, the greatest, um, you know, opening for me happened in, in, in a deep connection with a master, with a, with a, uh, with a being that no one in the, the esoteric circles is the master DK, he's a Tibetan Lama. And the love that I experienced through that contact, through opening myself and receiving and listening to the love that emanated from a being that I, I, I couldn't touch, but who touched me so deeply that all other love fell away by comparison, that, that opening to a transcendent love, to know that there is a world soul that is not manifest, is transcendent, that is a source of love so deep that everything that we've sought from other human beings is there and amplified tenfold, a hundredfold, and that we live in a universe of love and that that love can be transmitted to us and it's trying to be transmitted to us. That was a source of deep humbling in my life to get on my knees on the mountaintop and realize I was only a small cell in a vast universe and it was a loving universe and there were beings that loved me not so much in a personal way but in a deeply transpersonal way that is a transmission of love to remind me of who I am. So that transcendent love, that love that is waiting in the subtle dimensions of our being, when we learn how to meditate, when we learn how to lift our antenna up, when we learn how to, to listen to something greater than all of the chatter of human thoughts and ideas and so on, that there is this rich soul soil waiting in the inner worlds to to send on us to to overlight us to shine through us that that is um one of the great sources of contact with the world soul and another source of contact is is the soul imminent so this is the idea that the soul of the world what the ancients called the anima mundi that this world soul is inherent in all life, that it is lifting up through the planet itself, that it is this Sophia, it's the, it's the radiance of matter and its intelligence that flows through our bodies, this, this imminent emergence of soul. And, um, and of course, much beyond human, um, it, the dragons and the serpents, the whole shamanic world that people contact through ayahuasca or, or, or through shamanic work of some other form, that this is also the soul of the world. And this great being, this great being that's expressed, embodied through many beings is also wanting so much for humans to awaken and to, to reconnect themselves with the source. And that ultimately this, this transcendent soul of the world and this imminent soul of the world are part of the same being, they're part of this same being that isn't split, that is part of one awareness, one sentiency that is the planetary life. And that humans are really just the dimension, the kingdom of nature that is in the middle of this, that there are there are the so-called lower kingdoms of nature and the higher kingdoms of nature that these transcendent realms and the imminent realms are what part of one great whole. And when humans get past their ego and get out of the way, they experience themselves at the heart of this whole system and that love vibrating through them. So for me, just as I also had a, a specific portal into the transcendent soul of the world, this relationship with... Um, with my Tibetan master, I also had a specific portal into, into the, the, the soul imminent. And for me, that was a whale. And so the tremendous experience of love that I had through contact with the transcendent soul also came to me um, and has come to me in many ways from the world imminence. But, but right here in this place where I'm sitting in front of me, a 50 foot right whale and her calf came and came in a dream first and then came in reality and and gave me a, a chance to spend time with him and 
the love that radiated through my body and my being from that contact, that that unmistakable transmission of love beyond human love, but but at the core of the same love that is human love, blew my body open in ways that I, I've never I've never really been able to speak about too much because it's in a transmitted experience it's like an access the experience of what it is to be loved in a body what it is to be able to, to experience that same transcendent love through every cell of your body through every vibrating molecule of matter and the whales somehow carry that transmission with their whole body with their whole being of listening to cosmos listening to the original sound of the universe in their bodies and transmitting that so so humbling to to have that cross species transmission to feel that there is a imminent soul and it's shared with these other beings on the planet you know whether it's forests or the oceans or mountains that the the soul of the world is alive in matter and of course this is the experience that we have shamanically when we when we drop deeply into our bodies and we learn to trust the the wild magic that lives inside us the bears that live in our armpits and the and the serpents that are coiled at the base of our spine and this the shamanic reality of the soul that is in these bodies that we've so lost touch with as a human species that's gone to mind and gone to this kind of scientific materialism and and lost contact with its deep and rich sources of soul. So, you know, the world soul that comes through the transcendent qualities of the world and the imminent qualities of the world, these are two sources of nourishment. And in my life, they're what's given me the courage to live the life that I've lived is because I've known at times of deep um stress or challenge or whatever that i am resourced so deeply and i'm supported so deeply by these dimensions of being that make the love that i'm capable of feel so small in comparison and yet not less than but that human love is as much a part of the ocean of love of the world soul as every other kind of love it's a unique expression of love and so that brings me to the to the, the the other way of seeing love that is between these soul imminent and the soul transcendent. And I would say it comes to the word beauty, that when a being is expressing soul, it doesn't matter whether they're a human being or whether they have a rose in your garden or whether it's the the raging storm outside or or you know the 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 voice the subtle voice of your 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 teacher or ally when someone is being true to their own nature then they're expressing beauty and it doesn't have anything to do with the aesthetic sense it has to do with being true to yourself being true to the vibration that brought you into incarnation in the same way that a, a rose is true to itself when it just is being a rose and that one of the great gifts um, of being alive is that each of us are given this note of truth this true note which isn't a conceptual understanding of truth but it is a living transmission. When somebody is true to the core of their own being, then that truth vibrates and radiates and people around them experience that as beauty. They experience the beauty of something being itself. And, um, you know, in the Buddhist tradition, you'd call that suchness, that each being has a suchness. They have a something that's indefinable, that when they're being true to their, their nature, that suchness radiates, is experienced. So, you know, in order to be in, a, in touch with that core of your own being, then once you are in touch with that, then you experience it everywhere. And one of the, for me, the greatest tragedies of human life is that we live amongst such beauty, like 
the planet to me is is an embodiment of beauty and when i'm not busy when i'm not in my head when i'm not in my i'm not in my purposes i'm not trying to achieve something or do something and i give myself time to open to the beauty that's around me it 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 opens me like nothing else it leaves me humble and broken in fact i wish i could I could, in this embodied being, I wish I could experience more beauty. I reach a point where it like blows all my circuits and I don't exist anymore. It's like death by beauty must be the most, most exquisite death of them all, not existing in the face of the suchness of the world around us. And the fact that human beings don't have that is their daily experience, is their, is their breath of, of being alive on this planet is such a deep heartbreak to me and I want to part of moving across the bridge in my own world is moving to the bridge where I just give myself the permission to live in that beauty to not be in a permanent state of holding my hand towards others and asking them to pleading with them wanting them to taste and touch what lives at the core of their being and what lives at the core of the world, but to just be in that. So, yeah, I sometimes feel the, the immensity of being able to transmit about that. As you can see, even now I'm trying to speak about something that just breaks my whole being and heart open. And, and yet there's nothing else that matters enough to speak about there's nothing else that matters enough to to make an effort to communicate and i know in my life i've spent all my life i've learned words beautiful words i've been a poet been an orator and so on and all of these words are just an attempt to say something about what can't be said, that can only be experienced and felt in the core of the being of a heart that's alive and vibrating with the mystery of, of the soul that is around us and everything in everything. It's like it's so present that it's almost impossible to miss and yet, and yet humans miss it, we miss it every day. So, so the world that's to come has to be anchored in that because that is the reality. That's the that's the truth. That every breath that we take is that love. Every everything that's around us is shining with the beauty of being itself with its own suchness. And the only ones that are not really part of that is human beings, because humans have been given this beautiful gift of free will and self-consciousness and self-awareness, which means that we can, we can manipulate our awareness so that we don't see and we don't feel the beauty around us. And instead, we, we live in a virtual world of our own making, uh, of a world of consciousness. And, and I think for me, the, the surest sign of that is is living in a world now where marketing and advertising and and propaganda and telling other people what to think and and how to feel and manipulating um, each other and just calling that business as usual that that's what it is to be human it feels to me the clearest indication that we've lost our suchness as human beings that we've lost our sense of being true that not only do we do we just take it for granted that we're not true to our own being we take take it for granted that everybody else isn't true to their own being as well and therefore they can be manipulated by ideas and by and by propaganda and by consciousness instead of instead of like being called forth as the beauty that they are, as the truth that they are in the core of their own being. So this, yeah, this is such a sure sign that we, if we don't know who we are, then we think that we can, we can seduce other people not to be who they are. 
And I feel like the, the power that's coming, the, the, the power of those beings that I'd meet around the world, the power of this community of souls, you know, one of the beautiful things about what's happening now is that, is that people have been choose, forced to choose their own gnosis, what is true for you, what is the core of your being in the face of fear of death, in the face of people going insane around you and, and um, trying to control and manipulate and all of the things that are happening in the world. It's like, what matters to you? Like, what is true to your own being? And can you live that? And as millions of people around the world, like it's, it feels small sometimes, there's only a small percentage in each, in each culture that stand up and, and are true to the soul. But when you add them together around the world, we're talking millions of people, brave, courageous beings who are also choosing the beauty of being themselves in the face of whatever it is that is to come and being resourced from the soul of the world, from its transcendent aspects to understand that there are forces and beings that are so ready to help. And um, what my own teacher, you know, has transmitted to me is that there's the beings that are a part of the transcendent soul of the world. At the moment, they're holding their, their help um, until it's asked for, because part of that is trusting human humanity, that at the core of that humanity is, is um, divine and that humanity will choose its divinity. So in this time of testing, there is a, there is a withholding from the kind of un, the, from the interference really of the, the transcendent soul of the world and a wanting humans to call it if they need it. And so for those who are awake as souls and who are seeking support, <clears throat> all we have to do is ask for help. And that help is given. That help is waiting to be given. And the same with the natural world, the same that the whales and that, and that other beings have transmitted to me is that nature, the whole of, of nature is a living, alive being waiting to help. But again, we have to ask for that help. We have to ask for that help to be reconnected and that humans have to become humble again and remember that their their science and their and their their mastery over matter and so on is so small in the great vastness of things we don't even beat our own heart we really have no idea what's going on <laughs> in spite of the fact that we have experts who are telling us you know when i think about the covid thing you know i just looked to africa there's like six percent vaccination in africa and and covid is not really operating there at all like there are mysteries way beyond what um what we we think that we know and those mysteries are waiting to support us um, and they're waiting to support us if we remember who we are and if we reach towards those sources that can that that are that are the reality of life on earth <sighs> and you know one of the things that is beautiful this time around is the recognition that that there is also a deeper power. There's a, there's a deeper power than the soul of the world, which is this, this suchness of the beauty of everything, of everything being true to its own nature that we only experience when we're true to ours. So that first step, you know, for every human being is to, is to make the choice in the core of their own heart, to live their own suchness, to live their own essential note. And that that can be felt, and it can be felt in the core of your, your heart, as it can be felt through your body, it can be felt through the core of your consciousness, that there is guidance, that there is gnosis, that there is a way to live your life, not the life that that you know your parents wanted or the, the world wants from you or that the politicians want you to live but your life to be true to that and to trust the guidance of your own vibration and and follow that wherever it leads so there's that and then in a world where sometimes it's difficult to hold that to to be true to that in the face of everything that's around you that there is this deeper 
connection which we might call spirit or void or the darkness or the emptiness in the core of beauty this this experience of the nothingness that that the everythingness of the beauty of cosmos is sitting on top of that that also was there that there is and that that is tr in in matter it's as deep in atoms as it is in galaxies that 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 darkness that dark matter dark energy that voidness is is like a gasoline on the soul that it allows the soul to supernova that the soul when it's when it when it is is finding itself limited by expression in this world it can go to that world to bring a deeper sense of um peace because in that peace in that void there is the unborn and the, the the never existing and so nothing can kill that which has never even come into incarnation at all and that eternal is at the core of every human soul and so the turning towards that is where peace is even if the soul is being misunderstood and ridiculed and crucified in the world the core of the soul has that place of peace so if we are at a time where where the transmission between worlds is giving way to the transmissions of the new world of this period leading up to 2025 this decade through to 2030 if this is is now past this point of no return that we're in a process now that is unstoppable and I know if I look back from 2018 or 19, when I was writing about 2020, I could not have imagined what has come upon us globally. Um, and I also can't imagine what is ahead of us, but I know we are in the fires and those fires are beneficent. Those fires, even the, the fears of death, even of, the, even of the, the challenges ahead of humanity on a planet that is, you know, deeply, um, struggling in its biosphere, that these are tests of love, that tests that allow and create the unique circumstances in every being's life, that they can choose the love that they are. And one of the beautiful things about tribe, this quality of reunion, is that we are there for each other. We're there for each other in a way that is much more powerful than um, people who think the same things or a chamber of commerce of people whose mutual um, mutual interest overlaps the soul of the world is unconditional in its love the soul of the world is eternal in its love it's not going anywhere and it's it's more powerful than the human illusions of separation that we've established and so as we begin to to find each other around the world and and shine our lights together, a vast power begins to operate within within the human consciousness. And as these temples begin to land around the world, I remember on the on the solstice eclipse of 2020, and we had this process of a hundred fires around the world. And now those fires, the embers from those fires, were gathered, and I went and sat around a fire here on the land that that held the core of that and and played with the the charcoal and the embers that have come from those fires all over the world and knowing that even though i'm here now in my seat and my body has stopped traveling around the world meeting hundreds of other bodies and and being in transmission with them that those journeys have already been made, those lines of connection are always there, that there is a transcendent um, power that connects our souls as well as um, when we come together that vibrates through our bodies and through our hearts and through our eros with each other. So we're creating these, these unbreakable links of these qualities of reunion as little pieces of the world soul come together and recognize each other in human beings and in the natural world around them. And so these are what's called temples and they're places where you could say that those of the civilization to come take refuge from the, the death throes of the civilization around, but they're also places that radiate what's coming are places where the truth of what's coming, the suchness of what it is to be humans is, is given full permission that that is what matters most, that at the core of temples, there is a, 
there is a stone and that stone says this belongs to the soul. This temple is a place where the soul is honored first. This is a place where the soul of the world can come and bring its dance into magic and into being. This is the place where, where humans have woken and realized who they are and who they're connected to, reconnected with their source and that that source is, is, the guidance of our lives so um yeah as i i think in some ways i think my educational career is coming to an end the place where where it's only polite as a being to um pay forward the great gifts that have been given me in my life by by beings who have seen and held me and touched me in places and times where where I felt alone and and I felt disconnected from the civilization around me and to have those those reaches whether it came through a human heart whether it came through a um a transcendent impression whether it came through a dream whether it came from a shamanic sign from nature that some sign that the mystery was still here and that i was still part of it and that my life mattered and had meaning as long as i was true to the core of me so because that gift has been so great in my life it felt only polite to pay that forward and to to spend um, a decent part of my life reaching towards others, meeting them and feeling them and offering the gifts that live in me um, as, a, as an encouragement to bring forth the gifts that live in them. And, and I feel blessed to live in such a beautiful culture now of soul in human beings. I feel proud to be human where once I, I, I really struggled with that. And, you know, many of you are either on this call or, or will be listening to it later. And um, so I want to express my gratitude to you for the many small and deep and meaningful ways that your soul's connected with mine. Whether it's giving or receiving, it's all the same thing, really. It's just... Uh, the reaching towards each other and the helplessness of being and bodies alive on the planet at this time. Both the incredible thrill of being alive now because we are on this impossible journey to bring something that that is thrilling, that, that makes you come alive, and also the helplessness because to love and to feel what's ahead for everybody and what's the consequences of our disconnection from source, the people around us that we love and knowing, knowing that the testing is upon us all and feeling that, feeling that and, um, and not being able to hold that, not being able to hold the beauty of the world without cracking open. That's when we um, need each other. We need each other's love. We need each other's fire. And, uh, and we need each other's support to turn towards those sources uh, that I'm calling the soul of the world. That even when there are not humans around us, that there is this anchoring through our own gnosis, through our own vibration of our souls to the vast intelligence of the universe that is dying living to support human beings in their awakening process and towards this the helplessness of the world around us like watching the matter um, of the world vibrate with the consequences of humans disconnection from source feeling the the power of the helplessness of that whale as it came to me just with no judgment no criticism just that question of what's going on, the reaching across through the species to my heart to say, but what of the love? Like, where is the love a reminding of that love? So as I bring this last transmission in this series to an end, it's, it's um, an answering of the question at the beginning of what have I learned about love? 
uh, what I've learned about love is that it is, it's universal and that it's all around me and that the illusion of separation that I and others live so much in is just that. It's an illusion. It can be popped in a moment, but it's a persistent illusion and it's an illusion that's caused incredible suffering for human beings. And maybe that suffering is necessary to get us to a point where we become helpless. And, and in that helplessness, we reach out to the source that we're disconnected from and we find sustenance in each other and in the, the soul of the world around us. So that's what I've learned about love is that it's everywhere. And the only thing that's stopping us living in love is really our free will, our choice that we've made to turn away from that. And that because we have that free will that we can turn around again, that we can get on our knees and open our hearts and reach our hands towards each other. And in our helplessness, confess the love that we are and find that connection in each other. And from that place, then synergy starts to vibrate. The, the vibration of magic starts to become real. The, the connections that um, open up doorways that we haven't been able to imagine before become possible. And so what I've also learned is that love is magic. I live the life that, um, that I live, not because uh, of my intelligence or because of my, my sexiness, which, you know, is without doubt strong, <laughs> but <laughs> because of my helplessness, because of the love that is unstoppable and brings me a magic and shows me the way. And, and often, you know, the irony in my world is that many people look towards me as, as having some source of wisdom or some, some um, power. And, and I know, like everybody who loves knows that that power is, is a humble power. It's not a power that is, that is, um, that can be taught. It's a power that is in the core of each of us when we confess that really we're not in charge of this thing, that, that we're, we're a humble coating on the magic of life, that the soul of the world has, has become human as like it's become whale or like it's become rose. And that if we, if we are true to the soul of the world in the core of our own being, then it will show us who we are and it will flower us into the gifts that we are to others. So, um, yeah, I think the time now for me in my life has come to, to just fall more deeply into that ocean of the world soul and to spend more of my time in the contemplation of the beauty that is everywhere so in ending this transmission i want to i want to show you where i am and um just give you a taste of the beauty here All around there's bird songs and the tree that the house is, is kind of cohabiting with is just on the verge of breaking into its into its summer scarlet radiance and the the thing is as COVID here, there's no such thing as as um humans wrestling and and um trying to convince each other about their survival, there is just this timeless, eternal beauty of the suchness of the world. So I send you a vibration of that from this place where my soul has felt so at home and so able then to surrender to its helpless confession that it is just part of this world soul.